Welcome to another episode of our show, Faithbook. Faithbook started as a couple of lectures in a conference looking at the resemblance of our generally known Facebook with our life as Faithbook. And we spoke of many lectures, profile photo, personal messages, events, a profile in the making. And today we'll speak about transformation in the middle of stresses. Basically, I want to tell you that your faith book is under new management. How would you fare? How would your faith book fare if it's under new management? Somebody else came and says, give me your Facebook account. I'm going to change your profile. I'm going to put different events. I'm going to put a different image. But you are going through a lot of stresses. So what is the transformation process amid of stresses? What are the stresses first? There are so many stresses each one of us go through materialistic things, relationships, problems and tribulations, frequent failures, injustice, and even health issues. In Isaiah 37, the Holy Spirit wrote, and they said to him, thus says Hezekiah, this day is a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy, for the children have come to birth, but there is no strength to bring them forth. What are the feelings during these stresses? The first feeling is the feeling of unfairness. Why me? Injustice, oppression, the feeling of being lonely. Nobody understand me. Nobody knows what do I feel. And all of a sudden you find us saying, I hate my life. I hate everybody. I don't want to see people. Or people will say, I wish I die. And then we go through confusion and we go through who is really against me. What makes the stresses become more intense and more difficult and more suffocating, that there are certain things that makes the stresses, which can be normal to many people, become more intense on one of us. For example, I am pampered in my early life. My parents never allowed me to go through any difficulty. They always solve my problems. They always pay my tickets. They always run to the principal and tell him, not this time. And all of a sudden when I have a personal stress, it's too much. Another reason for intensifying the stress is when I am so self-centered. I don't think of any other person but me. As if no one has weaknesses or troubles or tribulations except myself. I never imagined the poor or the sick or the needy or the lost people who lost loved ones. Over expectations. I'm over expecting from my friends. I'm over expecting from my colleagues at work and my acquaintances in the church 
And when, I don't, when they don't deliver, my stresses are more and much more. When I don't admit the problem, the issues becomes more intense. A perfectionist person, his stresses are more than a person who is simpler and less perfectionist. Also, there are unsuccessful ways of fleeing from the troubles. By denying justification, despair, projection, uh, regret, which we will discuss in a completely separate entity under the enemies of transformation. And that's why it's very important to realize if you cannot change the circumstances around you, at least change yourself so you are not able to be fallen under the stresses. You may not change the stresses, but you may change your ability to how to deal with the stresses by not falling under the stresses. How do we being transformed during the stresses? One of them, accept reality. Don't keep crying over spilled milk. A person who has sinned once and God forgive him and he repented and confessed, he continues to feel guilty and reminding himself with his past sins. A girl who failed an exam or failed a relationship, all of a sudden she always reminds herself that there is no hope. Accept reality and move. Don't keep crying over past failures. And on the contrary, also don't keep building sand castles and dreams of future that completely unrealistic to your abilities. Admit and know the problem and the boundaries and the limits of your abilities. Another way of working through the stresses, analyze the situation and search for a solution. People who play chess are always confronted in a corner, but they need to look at every single movement and every single piece of their battleship in order for them to know how to move and come out of this stressful condition. Ask yourself, what is the most realistic uh, and appropriate reaction to that stress? Sometimes it's not just being angry and crying, but maybe going out to take some hours alone, maybe getting help. What is the appropriate method? Ask yourself, why did I reach to that level of stress? Elijah was found to be very stressed because he hasn't been eating or sleeping for many nights. And when God told him to eat and he slept, he told him, where are you, Elijah? What made you reach that level? Why did you succumb under so much stress? What made you reach that level? What is the incorrect way of responding to the stress? It's as important as what is the correct way. One of the ways to combat stresses and transform in the middle of stresses is fighting the thoughts. Rather than you blame others, give an excuse to others, you will find yourself less stressed. Rather than you keep blaming yourself, accept your weakness because you also have many strengths. 
rather than you withdraw and isolate and be desperate, try again. Keep rising. Don't stay fallen. Fight the thought that I'm going to keep deteriorating and there is no more hope for me. Change that thought into trust and hope in yourself and in God. Fight the thought of suspicion and being hesitant by positive action. Don't keep going back and forth, back and keep going forward. Number four solution to help you through transformation during stresses is praying, especially the name of Jesus Christ. Saint King David in Psalm 30 says, O Lord my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. Praying may not change conditions, but will change you to be able to take upon yourself the conditions. In Proverbs, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs to it and are safe. The fifth way in transforming amidst the stresses is control your words. Blaming, criticism, and complaining only going to worsen the stressful condition. And it's not going to solve anyone. And it may make people who want to help you scared to help you because they are being criticized or blamed. Stop calling yourself a failure. Stop claiming that you are just a bunch of desperate conditions came together. As King David wrote in Psalm 39, I was mute, I did not open my mouth because it was you who did it. Finally, in order for you to have transformation amid the stresses, wait and be patient. Wait and be patient. In Psalm 27, we pray, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I will never forget the righteous people, Zechariah and Elizabeth. How long they waited until they got John the Baptist. And when, they, when the angel appeared and said, your prayers were heard, after how long? Be patient. Our Lord knows the stresses and know our impatience. But sometimes he is slowing his response for us just to wait on the Lord and keep praying more. How easy for God to respond from the first prayer. But what is the benefit of you as a dad responding to the child, asking something and you give it right away? He's learning nothing. But by you telling him, wait, do this first. Go and sit and take care of your business first. He will learn that when he gets something, it's precious. He waited on it. He took it after struggle and after prayers and after waiting and after patience. Patience results in inner transformation. 
not just outside. And that's the idea of faith book profile change. Because we are speaking about something that will continue as a process forever until we go to paradise. Patience and waiting are some of the solutions to really transform us during stresses. So to be transformed during the stresses, you need to realize the stress. You need to confront the problem. You need to realize your weaknesses and your abilities. You need to know how much you can do and what you cannot. You need to know how much you are exaggerating and you shouldn't minimize. But then, trust in God, pray, and be patient. Faith book is under no management, and the no management is the management of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has the most patient character out of anyone who have worked with you. He will be so be patient with you to change you from a day to a day to a day, one up, one down, until eventually you go more and more into a full transformation, into a new management of your faith book. Until next time, God bless.